Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What I want to do is go over the results from our TLC lab and interpret our uh, data as far as what the unknowns were. So a couple of reminders on the bottom of our screen here, we have the identities of the uh, stains that were used in our lab for the known values. In the TLC plate on the right, we've got unknowns number one, two, and three. So as a reminder, on the bottom, what I've done, I had done was, uh, let me do that in a different color. Uh, what we had done, I'm going to draw this in uh, blue here. Uh, this was the line here at the bottom where I put the, uh, the drops of our stains starting out. And then these curves at the top were, were the solvent fronts. And uh, I just traced them in pencil, kind of where they formed. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, the solvent front kind of moves up the sides a little bit faster than in the middle. Typically what you'll see um, on a on an exam question, things like that, um, is that instead of having a curve like that, you actually just sort of draw a straight line kind of going across where that solvent front would be uh, to know where that solvent front measured. Now, one of the pieces of analysis that you would do typically in a lab like this is calculate an RF value. So you would take the distance traveled by your sample and divide it by the distance traveled by the solvent front, or you might say the distance traveled by the mobile phase, or your eluent. So um, what we would typically then do, so, so we would measure, uh, usually take a ruler out and do this. What I did is that I put this on one centimeter graph paper so it'd be a little bit easier to see. So I'll count up from the bottom, one, two, three, four, and five. So our, our solvent front is really close to about five centimeters for all of them. It is important to note that um, in the first two plates, the one on the left and the middle, it is a little bit higher. So you, you do want to calculate your RF values for each plate. When I'm looking at, for instance, to calculate the RF value of sample A, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, and the reason being is that uh, everything is sort of spread out really evenly. If we compare that to sample B here, the fast green, the fast green has a darker area. And so typically what you would do is that you would take that darkest area and then you would measure and you would maybe sort of put your point in the middle to measure your distance and how far it traveled. Um, since for letter A, it's really even and spread out, I probably would choose something kind of in the middle. Okay, similar for letter C, which is uh, very light on the, uh, in the photograph. So if I was going to do my RF value for uh, sample A, the E is in Y, um, I would, so again, we're going to, our solvent front, if we uh, count up, let's see, whoops, I did that wrong, let me undo that. Uh, so we would have one, two, three, four, and five. So I would say uh, maybe for my RF value for my sample or distance traveled by my sample, let's call it 2.8 centimeters. And on the bottom, it would, let's say, 5.2 centimeters. And we would take those two values and divide them. So 2.8 divided by 5.2, I get about 0.54. And so there are no units with the RF value uh, but we would use that to numerically compare to our unknowns and say, do we think that, um, that uh, E, S, and Y is in any of our unknown values? And so we would want to do that. And sometimes visually uh, it can be tricky to tell, like if we are comparing a, our unknowns to our samples. In this case, um, it would actually maybe be a little bit easier just to sort of qualitatively compare because our solvent fronts are really close to each other. They're all right around five. So you almost could kind of go across and say, oh, do we have something in one of our unknowns? Like, uh, do we think we have it in there? And, uh, um, and so I would definitely probably make a good guess without doing the math here that in, in sample, unknown sample number three, that we probably had E, S, and Y uh, sample or unknown or known A. So I would say that, and maybe it's a little bit tricky to tell for unknown number one as well. Uh, unknown, unknown number one, I might also have um, letter E, which is saffronin. And so um, 
and, uh, and I haven't even talked about the methylene blue or anything like that. Um, but it would be important to uh, do the calculations because your uh, TLC plates are, are often maybe not uh, the same or the sample doesn't travel up the same amount. Um, and you also, and so you always want to do your RF value or be able to kind of estimate it on a problem. In fact, there, on, 2000, on the 2017 AP Chemistry exam, there was a TLC problem, and one of the TLC plates, the solvent front, did not travel nearly as far um, on one plate that it did to another. So it made it a little bit trickier uh, to be able to uh, compare it side by side visually. All right. So hopefully that helps you analyze your uh, your TLC uh, lab, uh, and you've learned how to do your RF calculations, your retention factor. And uh, thanks for watching.